Okay, so welcome to this conversation in careers with a fraction of your dedicated One Nucleus team. So I am Aline Charpentier, Head of Innovation Support, and I am joined today by Alicia Gallier, Business Development Manager. So we're going to try to give you a few hints into our own our small career uh, and the way that led us to work for One Nucleus and um, for you. So I hope you enjoy. So kicking this off, Alicia, could you tell us a bit about your career background, how you went into science and how that developed into joining One Nucleus? Of course, thank you very much, Elaine. Um, so yeah, pleasure to be here today having this, uh, this chat with you. So I think um, for me, I've always been sort of fascinated by um, discovery. And um, for me, science is kind of the, um, if you like, the epitome of discovery. It's always um, learning um, new things, testing out new things. So for me, um, going into doing my undergraduate in environmental science, it was, an, it was a broad um, kind of overview of science, but that was, that was sort of really exciting because I got to, to look at science in many different aspects, sort of physics, biology, chemistry. Um, and then after that, I um, progressed into um, working in um, a, a testing laboratory and I did both sides. So outside of the lab and inside of the lab. So I was very lucky to be given the opportunity to progress inside of the lab without sort of prior uh, sort of um, industry experience, if you like. And from there, I became um, really fascinated with sort of the um, this kind of, uh, if you like, wet chemistry in the lab and and testing using mass specs and I thought oh this is this is brilliant you know that there has to be more to, to learn and um I did place a lot of I did place a lot of emphasis on sort of academia in in my early career funnily enough it's sort of I used that as a way to kind of to further my opportunity so I then went back into academia to do my master's in biotechnology and um upon doing that became um, um, sort of more focused. You know, I learned a lot about different sorts of assays, how you um, test for different types of compounds and molecules. Uh, and that's where my focus shifted, I guess, more into sort of a, a, a biology chemistry um, outlook in science. And, and then coming out of doing my master's, um, Abcam <clears throat> was a, is a very obviously well-known um, biotech company in Cambridge and everywhere I looked when I was looking for job opportunities, um, Abcam was, was there. So again, I was um, lucky, very lucky to get um, a role at Abcam and I progressed through various roles from uh, logistics um, to a more sort of supplier management side. So again, I sort of had a little bit of, um, so the logistics was kind of well, laboratory based as in your sort of aliquoting and handling um, biological uh, antibodies. Um, and, and then I moved out of that and I saw more of the business side. <clears throat> and actually seeing the business side of things was an eye opener because from my ac academia or my academic experience and prior roles, I hadn't had that exposure. So dealing more with kind of the the contract side of things and and the quality side of things um, was something I enjoyed and then sort of as that progressed um, you know uh, the, the Abcam is a it's, a it's a growing company it's a fairly large company I guess it's still getting bigger uh, and I think I was I, I was looking for an opportunity where I could maybe have a little bit more sort of responsibility if that's the right way to say it, in my role or maybe a little bit more influence and then I came across the um the business development manager opportunity at One Nucleus and um I'm very fortunate to, to to get the role and it again it has been it's been an eye-opener in terms of all the different sorts of um you know aspects of business which uh, I hadn't actually had exposure to before. And because One Nucleus is a much smaller company than my, my previous role, um, it really has given me um, a really good oversight um, and visibility of all the different decisions or business decisions one has to make and think about um, when, when, um, it, when doing science and business together. So for me, it's really been a journey about um, Un uncovering what is makes science tick 
which is the business aspect. So it's been really enlightening. Okay, thanks, Alicia. And we're very fortunate to have you indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, and I'll get back to the joining the smaller organization and then the, um, the ownership of, of, um, of doing your, your, your work and having more responsibility. But maybe to start, just to, to bounce on um, the transition from a sort of lab-based, um, well, carry progression to working more in an office, was it a conscious decision when you joined AppCam to not work in a lab at all anymore or what just came gradually? And um, and then I'll reflect a bit on what I've done because uh, that's the reason why I'm asking. No, uh, yeah, good question. Um, so in, it was a conscious decision, actually. And um, funnily enough, in my previous role, when I was um, working at sort of in the testing laboratory, I made a conscious decision to move from um, admin into the lab. So both points, it was, yeah, it was, it was sort of seeing both sides of, of the business that really intrigued me, sort of being able to see that the, the complete um, journey from, so in the testing lab, it was samples coming in to the very end. And then again, in Abcam, actually, it was, um, it was seeing that the, the antibodies arrive in and then going all the way out to the customer, but also understanding what the customer's aims were and what their research was and how we could get the best product for that. So it was conscious. Yeah. Well, how, how, about your, the, how about your experiences then, Aline? Yeah, I like this point yeah. because it, it's having the bigger picture mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. you're doing. And actually that resonates in what I've done. So very quickly started with science, I think with the same drivers, I always liked science, all of them. It just, I, I came across to, I think chemistry, biology were probably the two things I liked. And uh, you were in the early twenties where biotechnology was really kicking off. And I don't think we were really talking about biotechnology as such when I was in high school. So I couldn't say that's what I wanted to do, but it's when I progressed doing my degrees and then my master's that we were offered all this, you know, great molecular biology and, and having um, uh, opportunities in the lab as well. So really excited by the science and what it could do. Uh, but I think one day I had the opportunity to work in an academic lab, so to have a project research, uh, working alongside with a PhD. Uh, and that was the sort of first steps to get into the PhD after. And that was the, the massive eye opening of it. It's surrounded by amazing people doing an amazing job. But I think that was the reality kick of what it is actually to do science in an academic setting. Uh, and I had this, I don't know, dream of having amazing experiments that work just like in a couple of days and you have great results and then you can move that forward. But actually science in, in lab when you're doing discovery is much more, um, well, complex and, and you have to uh, tune all your, your steps on your experiment processes. And that's actually taking a lot of dedication, patience that I probably didn't have at this time. <laughs> so uh, I felt it was, a really good and I really admire the people we're working with but I was mixing a bit this big picture as you mentioned and so I think I like the science but into the context of something else um, so this is why I felt okay so science is good but it, it's also applied and it's you know used as innovation for something so this is why I moved to uh, doing a, a business degree so completely unrelated but focusing on this innovation questions how how you generate innovation how you transfer what you call um, an invention into something that actually you feel a need. Um, so that was cross-sector, that was not just in biotech, but I felt that I had, I had to have this sort of wider view of things, which was really good and really interesting to take a step back. Sometimes it's good to speak with people from completely different background. Um, and then moved a bit in different position, actually worked in, in a tech transfer organization, worked in the scientific services of the French embassy in the US, which was a great experience for um, being closer to working with American uh, universities and, and tech transfer organization. But then went back to work in biotech because this is where my heart sits, I think. Uh, and also because this is where I feel that there's lots of really good innovation to do. Uh, but totally get the point about um, yeah, seeing the bigger picture. And I think there's nothing wrong about that. Is If that's what you feel uh, you want to do, then uh, it, it's what you should pursue. Um, How do you feel? So, well, I mean, for, for me, I, I, I've 
part of where I've en ended up has also been really governed by sort of what's around me location wise so I don't know if you've had a similar experience I mean uh, yeah I've, yes I've always had that kind of like that I don't know if you can call it innate interest <laughs> I was born with it but I've always had that sort of um yeah interest and and p passion for science and it just so happens I'm very fortunate to to, to be on the doorstep so I was, I was I was born in Cambridge um on the doorstep of where you know you've got some you know a, a very strong academic institutions um we've got our, our Baberham where you've got all your, your therapeutic companies um mm. growing up and at, funnily enough actually from from an early age I didn't really realize that you know you so took it for granted so yeah. absolutely absolutely I, I think I thought when I was looking for jobs it was like that in in most places mm. I thought oh this is just what's available job wise I could you know I could get that so do you, have you have have your decisions been governed maybe geographically or, or? Mm, yes and no uh, so I grew up in Toulouse which is in the southwest of France so yes on the sense that it's um it, they have lots of research driven industries and and uh, really strong research base and lots of students actually so it's great for this, well, being embedded in a student community and yes, developing your interest into science, but it's the Airbus birthplace. So it's a lot about aeronautics. So if I had followed that, I would probably end up being an engineer, which I wasn't. Um, um, but I think you're right, it, it's being surrounded. So yes, it's then picking the place you want to go to and, and have this infusion of science. I think it's to be ready to, to also move and experiment other areas. Uh, so <clears throat> I studied in a great place. Then now I studied business in Grenoble, which is actually a, a city really strong on the wall, nanotechnology. So it, it's not entirely relating to life sciences, but it's also a very exciting area. And then living in Boston in the US and then in Cambridge in UK. Yes, I totally agree with this point of it's, uh, it, yeah. And I think it, you take it for granted too often and you forget it, but it's good to remind yourself that we are lucky and very fortunate to be in, in such environments where we have access to really interesting people at our doorsteps and and not just within our, our workplace. I mean, your, your social life, your, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your friends, you know, <laughs> parents of the kids that are going to school with yours, all of that. It's, it's really uh, with this Cambridge culture and it's good and it's... Uh, I think the whole ecosystem in a way was influential because I, I often remember as well sort of, um, you know, having a, a, a sort of a big hospital close by as well. There was, you know, and like Cambridge University with all its departments, um, it, it kind of, it, it really resonated with me. So all, all these interesting kind of areas of research and 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 the hospital had all like I say these different departments which specialized and it all ties in it all it all kind of um creates that kind of buzz if you like that what's happening in in this in this region um yeah. so uh, that, that and to did, want to be part of it I exactly guess, yeah. it was really kind of like kind of like I say influential in in early decisions um so so yeah so I, I like you say fortunate to to have that on our doorsteps in terms of um I think another really key um kind of influencer for me was having like the right people around me um and um I've done a few of these conversations so far and the the, the topic of mentorship comes up quite a lot ha, has that been sort of a, a, a key enabler for, for you Aline in terms of your decisions or um I don't know about mentorship. I'm, I'm still puzzled by just the definition of it. You know, is it just a one person who is like really driving you to something? But yes, the, the people, well, definitely. And I think at, at all level, um, um, if you take the my transition from going to do a PhD and work in an academic lab and not knowing what else is in the world, actually that shifted because 
I met a really good friend at uni who, you know, who told me, oh, actually, you could do this business school. That's really interesting. And, you know, he, he, he hooked me into that. So it's not necessarily a mentor, but it, it's a someone that I was able to listen to at some point and who, you know, just opened my eyes or opened opportunities. And, and I think, yes, that went all along with that. So then and working in this tech transfer organization, I, worked with someone who was really savvy in, in the topic and just get me interested into it and allowed me to stay a bit longer just to strengthen a bit you know, my, my, my skills in, in that aspect and that actually what got me the next job. So yes, I think I think all along is, uh, I don't know if you call them mentors, but you call them, you know, people you work with and, and who are, um, who are really, I don't know, supporting your yeah. your skills but also allowing you to see beyond or to see other things yeah. which I think is important and I think linking with one nucleus this is where we're very lucky because well not only we have a really good and, and diverse team to work with which is great but it's also all the network we're working with uh, that we are again very very fortunate to get their experience um, get their I don't know advice on how how they're developing so so it's like we're having a uh, a building life science adventure on a daily basis, basically. <laughs> I, I very <laughs> much agree. Same. Very much agree. I think um, in terms of like how much I've managed to expand my network and, you know, it's, 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 it's one-to-one -one conversations, but it's also the um, attending the events that we do, um, the, the industry events that are going on around where we sort of um, collaborate and support on those ones as well. Um, it's been, it's been, yeah, again, an eye opener to, to sort of see the different roles available um, within the sector, which isn't always obvious when um, mm. you're specialising in academia or, or maybe even in industry early on, you know, depending on what, what path you take. And I think One Nucleus has definitely helped me to sort of see that, that breadth of expertise, which um, it takes to make a successful company in this in the space if you like um mm. so that's that's been really valuable yeah and and just to point it's really good that at all level of course because that's what we're discussing now mm -hmm. but it's also what makes us good in the job we're doing mm -hmm. at you know supporting the the, um, the organizations we work with to develop on many fronts because it requires a sort of broad understanding of of the industry as as a whole so on the investment side technology side or the people side which is which is good and which is personally what i enjoy a lot uh, it's having this you know very large spectrum of understanding uh, to uh, yeah to, to digest and then um um, extend into interactions, which is which is interesting. I, yeah, I don't know if you feel the same. You know, you always ask, who do you think you're a specialist or, or, or a generalist? But definitely a generalist. <laughs> that's what yeah, I like. I think no, that's a really interesting question. And and there's this part of me which I do like the idea of kind of sort of specialising, but at the same time, I'm so curious. And 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 I think for me, well, one aspect of, of the role I really enjoy is sort of the people interaction as well. I think that is, um, and in, in all previous roles I've done, it's always been sort of um, forward facing or client facing or customer engaging. And it's that engagement aspect that um, really drives me whilst doing it against the backdrop of of science <laughs> so it's like a win-win because it's <laughs> fascinating topics and material um and insights into um I into innovation that's that's coming out almost sometimes before you know it's widely known it's it's quite to see like where things are going in the, the general direction um but yes. um yeah I, I i i i think yeah, generally, just having that overview is 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 very um, is very interesting, and it, it, yeah, it sort of keeps it dynamic, if you like. <laughs> yeah. I think you touch upon a really good point, which is I think is driving most of my interest in professional personal life. It's curiosity, uh, and that's allowing that. So having this opportunity to see the different aspects or, or, or faces of it, it's really feeding the curiosity element, which uh, which, which I think is 
essential. You know, I think when you're doing this type of conversation at some point, you ask about, you know, the, the best advice you would give someone or, or your younger self or something. And I think it's that, keep the momentum around curiosity. That's so important. Absolutely, yeah. It's sort of, um, it really pays off to sort of be be interested in and, and yeah, to keep that sort of fascination. And yeah, I, I agree, depending on, you know, we're talking about the life sciences here. So personally, I don't think that's hard because there's so much there. But I, I guess you could, you know, speaking cross sector, I guess that you could apply it outside you, as well. You don't think it's hard to be curious in life science? No, I, I, so, so, sorry, I think it's easy to be. Okay, yeah, 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 easy because the, the, the yeah, but again, if you're interested into it, yes, you will have people completely <laughs> hermetic to that and yes will not find it so yeah but no I, I agree there's there's so much going on that it's uh, it's exciting you know but um, yeah what makes us very lucky and fortunate and and that's I guess why um so the key objectives of 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 the careers conference is is um to to shine a light on on the different aspects of you know what it takes to to continue um people to enable them to build successful careers in the sector and perhaps as as you know as it evolves because things are always changing the skills required um you know as technologies i guess are changing then um this is having an impact and we we're, we're, you know as one nucleus is one of our ma main objectives is sort of the people side of business um this is what we're touching upon here so yeah. um the 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 lively panel discussions is something which I'm I'm personally really looking forward to 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 listening to and like as you said before Aline um having access to those experts in the network as well which which is how we've built all the panels is bringing all those um experts mentors um, um on board um from their various um roles and backgrounds to to share with us their insights as well so a lot to look forward to indeed in, in the so, yes. conference definitely panels and I would also encourage the networking element so Absolutely. making contact with people and 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 listening to their stories uh I think you know ours is you know as good as it is and probably going to an end but it's it's also having this one-to-one -one conversation because I'm sure everyone attending that they are very happy to share uh and they um especially with younger ones who are questioning their their career development so yes sharing and listening Excellent Agreed. stuff. Agreed. So um, I it guess well, we, we both we both hope to see all the listeners there and, and to connect with you on, on the conference app. And um, sure. th thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Thank you very much.